How's it going, guys? We have a past level question for surgery for 2CK. Variations of this question will show up on the other subject domains as well, such as internal medicine. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Now let's start the clip. Two hours after undergoing an emergency appendectomy, four-year-old woman becomes agitated and confused in the emergency room. The fuck am I saying? In the recovery room. Her blood pressure is 80 on 55, heart rate 120. Blood pressure does not respond to one liter of Ringer lactate solution. She has history of chronic asthma, managed with multiple medications. Question wants to know the most appropriate next step management. Let's just hop to the answer choices. Choice A, additional one liter of Ringer lactate solution. Wrong fucking answer. Obviously, we need to consider adequate hydration within the vascular compartment, uh, giving uh, IV saline, often a safe answer, okay? But in this case, it doesn't drive at the etiology of this patient's presentation. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, dobutamine, wrong answer. It's a beta-1 receptor agonist often combined with echo for stress testing. So you say you look at do dobutamine here, you say no idea what that would be used for. Just dobutamine echo can be used for stress testing, okay? Dobutamine can also be used for cardiogenic shock. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, dopamine, wrong answer. Okay, so dopamine, it's used on eosimilase, cardiogenic shock. Okay, so obviously agonizes dopamine receptors at lower doses, can agonize alpha and beta receptors at higher doses. There's a question on one of the pediatrics forms where they give you a kid who has a dilated cardiac silhouette and hazy lung fields, implying cardiogenic shock, and the answer is dopamine. Okay, I don't want to get too hyper tangential right now, but as I said, it can agonize all of the receptors, receptors, dopamine, alpha, and beta. If they ever were to tell you that it's given to a patient in the setting of sepsis, which it's normally not used for that case. It's not my fucking opinion though. We're talking like I've seen one question on the NBME exam. If it's applied in sepsis, they say, how does it increase the patient's blood pressure? They want you to know it's the alpha one agonism effects, okay? Because it can agonize all the receptors. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, epinephrine, wrong answer. Uh, highest yield use for eosimile is for treatment of anaphylaxis, okay? I mean, agonizes alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, beta-2. The agonism of the alpha-1 increases arterial, arteriolar constriction, which counteracts the dilatation from the TNF-alpha in the setting of septic shock. So that maintains our, or increases our blood pressure. And then the agonism of the beta-2 will make sure our lungs are open, okay? Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, hydrocortisone is the correct answer. So you need to know that patients who have autoimmune disease, they can give you IBD, sarcoidosis, SLE, okay? It doesn't matter. They might say that the patient is managed with multiple medications or is on prednisone. You need to know that patients who have autoimmune disease are often on oral prednisone. And patients who are on these glucocorticoids orally have suppressed adrenal glands, okay? Glucocorticoid, cortisol analog, it's gonna shut off your ACTH production. So you have an under-stimulated uh, adrenal gland. So in the setting of surgery or stress, such as an infection, patients can not mount a stress response, okay? They uh, have consumption of their endogenous cortisol, and the role of glucocorticoids in maintaining blood pressure is that they upregulate alpha-1 receptor expression on the arterioles, okay? That's what glucocorticoids do. They upregulate alpha-1 receptor expression on arterioles, which then permits catecholamines, epinephrine, norepinephrine to do their job, so, okay? So the, the quote, Glucocorticoids are permissive of the effects of catecholamines. So you need glucocorticoid there so that epinephrine or epinephrine can bind and increase slash maintain blood pressure. So if you give epinephrine or epinephrine first, it's not going to do anything because you don't have the glucocorticoid required for the alpha-1 receptor expression. Okay? So this is a pass-level question, as I said, but very fucking high yield for USMLE. Okay? They're obsessed with this. So that's a foundational point you need to be aware of. They're often not so easy just telling you the patient's on prednisone straight up. You, you need to be able to uh, infer that multiple medications in the setting of an autoimmune disease can often mean the patient's on prednisone. So nor just finishing up real quick, norepinephrine, wrong answer, classically used for septic shock. Okay, long discussion, agonizes alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, but not beta-2, unlike epinephrine. Okay, because beta-2 has uh, di peripheral dilatory effects as well, and we want to maximize just the constrictive effects by going all in on alpha-1 uh, by giving norepinephrine over epinephrine in the setting of septic shock. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.